or I know a couple of the students like to draw on their iPad or tablet, you can use that as well. And I'm gonna let him take it over from here. So it's nice talking to all of you. Hi guys. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is pretty exciting to come and try to teach a class to a group of people who love doing what I used to do. Gosh, I wish there was surf skate science when I was a kid because that's kind of what I was doing all the time. Um, so um, my name's Amadeo and I do, I, my background is a, a science illustrator. And that means that basically taking um, this, your subjects and trying to illustrate them accurately. Um, and so one of the things that I really love to do is to do fish. And so what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to go through a little bit of a talk about kind of the background and I'll make it quick because I know that it might get a little bit boring, but there is some cool imagery. I'm going to show you a little video of the process so you can see how one of my paintings um, happens on a time lapse. I think that if I was to do a demo of one of my big paintings, it would take forever and we'd be here for you know, three days and you guys would be bored out of your mind. So um, I got a nice little time lapse to show you so you can see that process too. Um, and then I'm gonna take you through one of my uh, digital paintings of a trout and you can see how that one's built up. And at that point, maybe we can look at um, trying to draw one of those yourself if you'd like to. Um, and then I'm not sure, questions through the chat will be great. I don't know if I'll be able to answer them all um, uh, in time, but I'll get to them at some point. Uh, and of course, I'll give you guys my email after this and you can always send me an email or um, I, I'm on Instagram a lot. You can go there and direct message me there if you like and if you have any questions. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you and go through my little fish talk. Now, this one, this is important because it kind of gives you a background of what I do and really, what it takes to kind of make some of the illustrations that you you've seen um, and I'll, you'll see some of my work there too. Okay. All righty. Um, I can't see you guys, but <clears throat> can you see the, can you everyone see my screen or can I get a confirmation somehow? Tony, maybe. I can see. You. Okay, yeah, good, can. good, good. Okay, all right. So what we have here is, um, whoops, I'll backtrack just a little bit. So this is just, um, Here we go. So this is a, this is, I love this image because this is like, you know, the difference between, you know, how amazing fish are. There's some that are just gigantic and some that are so small and the range is there. Uh, and I just thought this was a nice contrast, the Garibaldi and black sea bass. Um, but the next thing I'm gonna show you is a video and this tells a lot, it's a couple of minutes, so bear with it, um, but it's a time-lapse. So there should be interesting stuff uh, the whole way along. And it's got a little bit of sound. If you guys have sound, uh, if you need to turn it down or anything like that, it's a couple minutes and then we'll pick right up after that. That's the old studio. This is all preparation, making sure the drawing looks good and testing my colors, always testing colors and putting down the first layers of really light wash.
So what I'm painting with is watercolor here. And the trick to watercolor is really going in really light layers um, and letting them dry in between. I don't know if some of you have used watercolor before, but if you don't let it dry, it just muddies all up together and it can get a really frustrating. So this fish is called a moo. Um, it's a, a big eye emperor fish. And this painting was done for Mark Healy, which I'm sure some of you know who he is. Um, he's as, about as big as it gets in the big wave surf world. And he's a phenomenal diver and fisherman too. So what you want to pay attention to here is how many layers go on top of each other, layer after layer after layer. Each time I put a layer down, I let it dry, and then I'll put another layer on top. That's my daughter. And the one of the most annoying things about fish is they got scales and you gotta paint the scales when you're doing my kind of work. And you gotta do scale after scale after scale after scale. But at the end, it pays off. Oh, more cameos from the kiddo. So you can see that my studio was also where I kept all my fishing stuff too. The last thing I do is the eye. Are you amazed yet? This is pretty cool. It's tiring. So this is a detail of that fish. So every scale and every fin, you can hide little octopus in there. Okay, so that was a, that was a, a good little video of, of what I do. Um, but these are some other fish that I've done before and I'm gonna take you through a little background of where this started, started doing fish uh, for identification. So um, I'm not sure, you know, maybe most of you are probably in the Florida area. You guys fishing is such a big thing over there. And when you buy a fishing license and you're gonna go fishing, um, you need to know what kind of fish that to catch and which ones to keep and which ones not to keep. And so a big part of what I started doing was doing identifications for different fish um, so that people can tell which ones are which. 
so I'm in California and in California, you can keep this red one on the bottom, but you can't keep this orange one. Um, but when you catch them, they look really similar. So my job was to make sure that I illustrated it clear enough so that you could see the difference uh, of which one and which one you could keep. Um, and so I think for you guys, to, when, if you're gonna start to try to paint fish and learn how to do it, um, you don't have to make it look like an identification at this point. I think for right now, you wanna keep it fun and not get super hung up on trying to make it uh, extremely realistic looking, but I think it is kind of fun to be as accurate to the fish as possible. And that's something that you guys can definitely do. Um, the most important thing that I tell my students is that the, the references that you have for your fish are the, or, or for your subject, any subject are the most important thing. Um, use those references and look at them um, to get your uh, inspiration, but also get the details. So one of the things that I do to make sure that I get the best references possible for the fish I do is I do a lot of fishing and diving. Uh, and so this is that red fish of vermilion rockfish that you saw on that other slide. And I wanted a good specimen for it. So I went out and found one and then I can take that home and take pictures of it. Um, but also just taking pictures underwater of the different, uh, the kelp and the scenes and the, and the reefs um, just to get a reference for some things. There's a fish in this one over here too, if you can see it, it's hiding in there. Um, when I get a fish and I bring it on board, the first thing I'm gonna do is take pictures of every part of it. And so um, this may not be something that you can do uh, unless you get a chance to go fishing, um, but you can, you can still search for those things online if you need to. So I take a good picture of the head and the middle of the body, the tail. Then I go around and pull, you can see my finger right here, pulling this fin out so that you can see the, all of the different fin rays. And I'll do that for all the fins um, and I'll get a good picture of the eye and then I'll get a good close up picture of the scale pattern. And that's so important to have that. I can always rely on those. Uh, if, I ever, if I'm ever wondering what something looks like, having a good reference, you can always go back and then uh, the answer is gonna be there. Um, so this is a really old fish illustration that I thought was cool, but I put it in here because it's, it's, there's a history of doing this. Um, people have done this type of uh, identification for a long time. Uh, and so um, I'm just a continuation of that. Um, so when you guys are doing a fish, they, they, the fish are so different. I think you guys have already done sharks and their fish um, and they have dorsal fins and pectoral fins. Um, and their fin structure lays out a lot differently. So what I'm gonna speak about is more of our finned fish, our bony fish. This is a, a white sea bass. It would be, it would fall in the same, not family, but as far as a bony fish, like a snapper uh, or something like that, um, <clears throat> where you can see the scales clearly, it has fins and rays and uh, the tail here. So what we need to pay attention to as a science illustrator of fish is all of the different counts of all of the fins, the counts of the spines and the counts of the rays back here and the counts down in here too. And some fish illustrators get so detailed that they'll count all of the scales along the whole fish, uh, which I don't do anymore. I've done it before and it takes forever and I, I just stopped doing it. So I just, I kind of do a rough count and then I paint them in, that's what you see here. So this is the breakdown of those things. Here's that lateral line that runs along the fish um, where, where the, some artists will count scales. And that lateral line is actually how fish sense each other in the water. So if you've seen a school of fish all swimming together in an aquarium, or if you've been able to go snorkeling, um, or even in a fish tank, if there's a school of fish swimming together and you see them all move in conjunction with each other, that's because they can sense each other with their lateral line. And that's a, that's a series of special scales that run down the fish. Um, and, and so that's there. Then you have dorsal spines, rays, anal spines, rays. Um, and those are the things that you wanna pay attention to um, in counts. I think for the basic illustrations, you want to really pay attention to where they are on the fish. So you notice how this dorsal, dorsal fin here, um, it is about 
it's not in the middle of the fish, it's kind of maybe a quarter of the way down the fish. So where it starts and where it ends is really important to pay attention to. So here's a more detailed, this can get dizzying how much stuff's going on here, but this shows you some of the things to pay attention to. Um, and if anyone's really, really interested, I can send you guys this slide later on uh, so that you can have as a reference to look at and say, oh, that's what this is, that's what this is, that's what this is. And then when you start seeing those things in your fish, you can go, oh, I need to make sure I put that fin in there. Or that one usually is, I can't miss that fin if it has it. So this is a good slide to have for reference. And these are all standards that if someone, a scientist came to talk to you or a fish biologist came to talk to you, you they would know what all of these terms were. And this is a cool view of the skeleton underneath that I, I did an illustration of also. Okay, so let's go through uh, the process um, of, of getting all this stuff together. So you've gotten a little bit of a background of how I collect the references, um, but then I have to take those references and make them so that I can use them. Uh, this is a pomfret, a uh, lustrous pomfret. And I think that you guys get them over there in Florida. They, they catch them when they're sword fishing. So they're a fish that lives really down deep. You can tell by that really crazy looking eye uh, how um, they just absorb a lot of light. And um, this was one that was caught actually in Hawaii and this person wanted me to do a painting of it. So you can see I'm collecting all those references, getting all the little fin details and so on um, that to make that drawing from. Now, some of you, most of us right now are working on pencil or some of you in Procreate and that's great. Um, I do my illustrations in watercolor and I also work in Photoshop too. Um, and so this is actually a composite image that I'll use to start with sometimes where I take all of those different elements that I you see in this picture and then composite them together in Photoshop to make kind of this general template of the fish. So this is not one photograph, this is one, this is six photographs put together to make this. Um, then I'll take that into Adobe Illustrator and then trace the outlines of that fish and all of those details. And so um, this is so that I can get an accurate representation of the curves. Um, and then I have to kind of go in and redraw all of the fins in those elements. This is an example of the scales. I needed a good reference for the scales. And they, like I told you before, they're a big pain, but you got to do them. And so uh, this was a reference for those. Um, then you got, then I went through and map out all of the scales. And this is a, something that you can practice at home too when, we, when you get to a fish that has scales. Their scale patterns follow this crisscross kind of a grid. And I'll go to this one, it's a little bit better um, of an example. But you can see there's, a, there's um, lines that are going this way diagonally. And then there's other lines that are crisscrossing the other way at uh, the opposite direction almost. And the result is they make that little diamond shape. Um, and that is, this is a good road, road map to use for the scales. And so if you, when you look at your reference, you wanna look at what, what is the general line that's following the outside of the fish and uh, fish scale and then follow that along with that. Um, once I get that done, I'm then taking that to Photoshop and I'm just marking my lateral line where that lateral line sits. And that's what that is. Uh, and then I start, then I take that drawing and I transfer it to paper. So you can see that this here was done in the computer, but then I have to transfer that. Oops, sorry, going ahead. Let's go the other direction. Then I have to transfer that to paper, but you can see how much work goes in on the paper drawing each one of those scales. But I couldn't have done it without the simple roadmap that I had created for myself here. Okay. And then magically it's done. <laughs> um, and this is the finished painting here, lustrous pomfret. So a lot went in between those, but you get the idea of the buildup process. And if you can imagine this one being painted like the video you saw, that's pretty much what it took. So these are some slides showing some of the other one fish I've done. This is a yellowtail. Um, this is again, a California fish. This is that vermilion uh, that you uh, saw um, a couple times. And this is a California sheephead. 
um, really cool looking fish. Um, one of the other things that I like to do a lot of, and you don't see a lot of it with the artwork that I've done for Salty Crew, but you see um, is the scenes. And in Florida is rich with people that do this kind of stuff. You know, there's, uh, you know, Guy Harvey, even though he's from Jamaica, I believe he spends a lot of time in Florida. Um, and there's so many painters on, on that side of the country that do such a great job and they do more scenes. Um, and so scenes are something like, this where you see the fish underwater swimming. And I like to do these too. Uh, and these are done usually in oil. So these are some Wahoo and some little baby Dorado and the Wahoo's chasing after the Dorado. Oh, there's something that I don't really wanna see too often, which is a great white. And then here's some yellow tails swimming off our coast here. So that's pretty much the little talk about what I do in background. Um, that's my daughter fishing. We go fishing as much as we can. Um, you can check my website out here with my work. That's my email. Um, if you wanna write that down, you can always, uh, you can email me questions and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and the Instagram is right there if you wanna see stuff uh, there. I think um, in the next month or so, I might start doing some Instagram live, uh, painting demos so you could see some really simple introductory painting demos uh, done there if you want. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the screen share. All right, I'm gonna look through some of the questions. If you guys have any questions, I'll answer them for you in the chat or I'll, I'll answer them for you uh, reading them in chat. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and write them now. I know there's a few there. I like how someone's upside down. How does that work out? That's interesting. <laughs> how are you doing that? You're hanging from the ceiling. Aren't your legs tired? <laughs> I actually um, use like some sort of effect to flip myself upside, to flip myself upside down. Like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, sideways. Yeah. Uh, so I see one question there. How long does it take? I think the, the watercolor in the video, um, that one took about 25 hours. Um, and that wasn't complete painting time. I think that was maybe, you know, 10 or 15 hour or sorry, um, five or so hours of planning and maybe 10 or 15 hours of actually painting. Um, and so I think you, you can make it go quicker if you plan out your, your painting as well as possible. Um, the other question I see is how long I've been doing this. I think I've been doing it since a lot of the ages that I see people sitting in here. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. I think the trick for me was is that I, I just kept, I kept working at it and I really enjoyed doing it. So all throughout grade school and high school, I still maintain drawing. I was definitely, you know, I took times where I, you know, didn't do it as much. I think in high school, I, I remember taking my first uh, biology class and I started to get back into drawing because in our labs, we had to do so much. Um, we had to do so much drawing to explain what we were looking at. And so I think I really enjoyed that and that kind of got back into it and then throughout college too. So I, I've just been doing it my whole life really. Um, as a career, I've been doing it since 2004. Uh, and I started, uh, you know, doing work for magazines like National Geographic and Scientific American. And then um, really, you know, had fished my whole life and, and started to become more passionate about painting fish. And so I started doing that. Um, maybe for the last, really seriously fish for the last, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 years or so. So, um, so another question is about watercolor. If I've used any other mediums other than watercolor, um, I do. I think watercolor was the one that I started doing the fish IDs with because it has such a nice quality to it. And I think I was the most comfortable with it. Um, and that's a good thing for you guys to remember too. You know, you you know, if you're comfortable with a with a medium, it's okay to keep working in that medium and 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 doing the things that you enjoy doing. I think as you get 
better at certain mediums, it's good to kind of branch out and explore different stuff. So as I got better with watercolor, I started to explore acrylic. I started to explore oil paints. Um, and then as I started to do more shirt designs and uh, designs for bigger companies, I, I really started to play digitally and work in Photoshop. Um, and for you guys, that might be Procreate. In fact, uh, one of my students just finished a big project for National Geographic in Procreate, 100%, actually it might've been 90% in Procreate and then a little bit of Photoshop. So for those of you who are working in Procreate, that's one of those places where if you wanna keep doing it, that's a very powerful tool to, to use. So keep it up. Um, but so I use digital, I use watercolor, oil paint. I do a lot of, see there's a, a question about pencils. I do a lot of pencil drawing. Uh, in fact, pencil is probably the thing, one of the ones that I love doing the most. I just don't do as, as much as I, I want to. Um, and I think I'd like to, now that we're all kind of stuck at home and doing this stuff, I think I want to spend more time doing some pencil work. Thank okay, you. which painting took me the longest? Oh, uh, probably that Wahoo painting. It took me forever to finish. I think when I started it, it took me five years to finish it. And that wasn't because I worked on it for five years. It was because it I just took forever. <laughs> and so that one took a long time. Um, and I think it was because I was learning how to work in the medium. Uh, it was it was tricky. So some of you guys have probably experienced it, you know, something that you if you're if you're new to something, it takes you a long time to do it. And, and that's OK, too. Uh, I just think it's important to finish what you're doing. OK, any more questions? All right, I'm gonna go to my other file, which is a brown trout. And maybe this one is one that we can try to draw together. Um, and what I'll do is I'll kind of walk you through it. I'm not gonna really draw on the screen, but I have the layers separated so that you can kind of see the different parts. And then we can look at the fish and say, okay, well, that's this part, that's that part and then you can do it uh, on your own as well. And you don't have to, if you don't want to, if you want to just watch, that's fine too. Okay. This is a brown trout. And so, what's good is I have some reference photos. So this is a brown trout. You can see the reference photo here and you can see how beautiful they are. They have a really cool shape and and if I was observing this reference on what to draw, I'd be paying attention to how kind of long they are uh, and how big some of their fins are. You see how far these fins stick out, this fin too, and paying attention to their jaw and how protruded that lower jaw is. They kind of have an underbite or, yeah, an underbite. Um, and then how beautiful the spots are and how many of them are. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to be looking at in this reference. So I can leave that. I actually, I'll turn that one off so you can see my drawing a little bit better here. Um, and I'll let you guys go ahead and take a closer look at this because this is, if you're going to draw this, we want to pay attention to that overall shape of the fish. Sometimes we get caught up in maybe drawing by how we think something looks because of our, from our memory. Um, but what we really need to do is think about what it looks like in reality. So a lot of times we think of fish having like, you know, a shape like this, right? A basic fish shape. Well, that's true. A lot of fish have that shape, but this fish does not. It has a, a, that shape, but it's longer. So if we took this shape here, it actually is an elongated version of what I had just drawn. So you can see how this almost fits that when you extend it out. 
So it's really important to look at, um, it's really important to look at this and, and, and actually go, okay, what is that? What, how, how is that shape? Is it a long one? Is it a short round fish like the pom the pomfret or is it a really long narrow fish like a barracuda? What does that look like? So you want to take a look at this one and, and, and make that judgment for yourself. I would say that this is a more elongated shape, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna let you kind of finish that shape for those of you who are working along. Actually, I'll keep that one up there. I like that up there. Because I'll use that as my rough drawing here. I think your guys' drawings are gonna turn out a lot better than mine are. I mean, from that start right there. Yes, it's a brown trout. Okay, so once you got that basic shape, what I suggest doing is lightly, if you're working in pencil, you know, kind of lightly building that shape in, but to also lightly build in some of the other elements too. So, um, I'm just making new layers to do this, but I want to lightly build in and block, block in where some of the other elements are. So I would look at my reference. Well, it's not the best one. Let's see. Let's look at this one and say, okay, well, mm, my fin is the dorsal fin. Remember our dorsal fin in here is kind of right in the middle of that body. So I'm going to put that dorsal fin starting right about there. And I'm just going to give myself a little mark on where it starts. And I'm going to give myself a mark on where it ends too. In fact, I'm going to turn my line drawing off the other one so you can see me doing this on my own. And I feel like it ends right about here. And then I'm going to look at where the gill is. And that gill is right about here. And I'm just going to do this. This is rough, right? I'm not doing this with worried about the detail right now. I'm gonna do that later. Um, and then where's my, this other fin? And that fin is down here and it goes to about right here. So this is the pectoral fin. And so I need to make sure I'm gonna mark where that fin shows up. So I'm just giving myself little marks. Now you see the dorsal fin and this is the pelvic fin, I believe right here. Then I'm gonna look at those two fins and go, well, there's one on the top, the dorsal, and there's one on the bottom. Where does the one on the top start and where does the one on the bottom start? So the one on the top starts right about here, but the one on the bottom starts a little bit behind it. So I'm gonna mark right there where it would come out. And then there's one more fin back here and that one kind of starts right in here and right here, okay? And you can see, oh, I was kind of off a little bit, but I'm pretty darn close. And you just want to get close for you guys. All right. So once you have everything roughed in, you can kind of then start drawing in in more detail. And I know I'm just tracing over this, but this should give you an idea of looking at those details and then getting a little bit closer. So when I'm looking at this, I'm gonna zoom in on my reference. And this may not be the best one, but I can see, okay, I got the edge of the gill right there. It's really hard to see, but I, I see it, it's there. And so I'm gonna draw that in. And then I'm gonna look at my fins and try to get an idea on how they attach. I'm actually gonna to go to this reference here. There we go. And then I'm gonna look for where those attach right here. It looks like we attach right about there. Here's our other fin and here's our dorsal fin. I'm just gonna go through and double check all my fins, make sure I have them in the right spot. 
There's this one here and this one. Oops, and I forgot about this little fin right up here. This little fin's called the adipose fin. If you guys look at the screen, you can see what I'm showing right there. It's that little round nub of a fin uh, behind the dorsal. So I'll add that in too. Okay, so the reason why we're kind of mapping this out is so the, because the placement of these fins is so important to making sure the fish looks the way it looks. And so once you've kind of mapped out where they start and where they end, then you can go in and draw their shapes in. And so then you wanna look at the shape of them. So this dorsal fin, if we look at that one, oops, I was on the wrong layer. This dorsal fin here has this triangular looking shape. So I am going to draw that, this triangular shape, and it comes down, but it doesn't just come down like this. I'm not just gonna bring it down like this. You notice how it has a little bit of a gap there. So I'm actually gonna draw it up like this, bring it down, and it's gonna go like this, and then it's gonna get a little bit of a gap, okay? We already got our adipose in there. And then we can move down to the pelvic fin. And this one is, does not attach as long in a long um, amount of big space. It just attaches in a smaller space and then it kind of fans out. So, and then if you notice this fin, it's different from the dorsal fin. It doesn't have, it's not as pointy. It's a little bit more rounded. So we'll start down here and then we'll come out and then we'll work our way around. And then we'll come back to that point that we marked as the, the part where it ends, okay? And then we're gonna go down to the anal fin, which is down here. And we mark, go to our mark and where we, it comes out. And then we'll draw this part out. And this one looks a lot like the dorsal, except for it gets a little bit more rounded. So we'll bring, come out, come down, and then we'll come back, okay. Oops. Okay, just checking the chat, see if there's any questions. Um, and then we got to do our pectoral fin, and that's that fin, this fin right here. And this one kind of sits and it attaches like that, and then comes around, and then it's a round fin like this. Okay. Okay, once we get all of our fins in there, then we want to put our eye in and we can actually kind of draw in our mouth too. So I'm gonna, I'm on this layer here. So one of the best ways in the, actually one of the things that I learned first when I did, started doing fish is I would do these fish and I would send them to a biologist and the biologist would always come to back to me and tell me that I needed to move the eye. It wasn't in the right spot. And so I found it was really important to pay attention to where the eye was. And I'll turn this one on. Let's see, I'm just gonna confuse. And what, what I realized, what it, the three things that you wanna pay attention to with the eye and to get it to sit where it needs to sit is you wanna look at your reference and say, okay, well, this is where the end of the gill is. This is where the nose is. And then this is where the corner of the mouth is, this bone right here. And your eye is gonna sit in some relationship to those three things. And so in all fish, it's gonna be different. In some fish, the eye will be up front more and some fish will be a little bit back. Some it'll be up high. And so you just wanna pay attention to where this one sits. So when I'm looking at my drawing, I need to go, okay, well, 
the eye kind of sits in the middle of the gill compared to the nose. So if I went from the nose to the gill, the eye kind of lands somewhere in the middle. Um, and then, and it lands somewhere in the middle and it lands just right about here in the head, okay? So I'm gonna draw that eye in and then I'm gonna draw this really gnarly looking mouth as it goes down here. And then I'm gonna draw the underside of the mouth here and it's got that big giant hook. Notice I'm just drawing over my other lines. It's okay to do this. You can always erase. You don't have to draw it perfectly the, same, the first time. Uh, and that's why I'm not working in pencil right now, but if I was, I would be working a little bit lighter. So I can go back and erase these lines and you can do this with pencil too. I'll erase those. I'm going to erase this one a little bit to make it so it shows up a little bit better. And then we draw it. So my eye is going to sit somewhere right about here. Might go through and fix that nose a little bit. I think that nose needs to be a little bit more round and round and kind of mean looking. They're grumpy. Fish are always so grumpy looking. Okay. Okay. And so once you once I, you have those, once you have the structure, then you can start building in some of the details. And I think that's a, a good way to go about it. Make sure you know where the fins are. Um, eye, gill, and then you can start adding some of the pattern in because the pattern all just falls on top of the body and on top of the details. Okay, so I think I'm just going to show you some of that, some of that happening in this drawing. You guys can all see my screen, so you can see what I've started with here was this line drawing, and the line drawing I actually drew in, you know, more of these fins here. Okay, and there's my little eye. I usually do the eye last, so I'll save that towards the end. Um, but one of the things I do is, and you can see this here, um, probably the first thing I do is start blocking in color. And I'll turn this off. And so this is kind of what my rough color is gonna uh, be. Um, I block in my color and then I start putting color in some of the fins. And so if you remember from this picture down here, you can see this beautiful orange. You don't see it in this picture here, but you see it here. So I'm taking that orange and I'm putting that orange in there and blending those colors through. And so that's usually what I start with is just roughly blocking those colors in. And then I might come in with um, some other, uh, some spots and I'll do that here. So then I'll come in with the dark spots because they're so important. Um, to defining it. And a lot of times putting something in a detail in like that can make you feel like you've accomplished something and make you feel like, oh, this looks good. And I'll, I, I really do want to keep working on this. Um, so it's good to give yourself those rewards sometimes. Sometimes you can be working on something and it can be frustrating and, and you really want to finish it, but you, you feel like you can't. Sometimes you got to get to the point where you do something like that and you get a little bit of reward for when you do it. So we're doing this, this is kind of like an ugly duckling stage. Uh, and then we add some spots and oh my gosh, instantly it starts to look a lot better. Um, and then from there, um, I might add some details to the spots. So these spots have a little bit of this orange kind of light around them. So I'll go in and add that in. Uh, and then um, I might add a couple more highlights on certain areas. And then they definitely have this, oops, those are the scales. They have this little the white circles around the spot. So I'll go in and add some of those too. And so now you can see it's starting to come together as far as the whole thing.
So once you get the spots in on something like this, um, then I might go in and do some of the scale highlights on them. And the scales, um, I don't really expect you guys to do all the scales because you would have to grid them out and make it um, use that grid. And that's kind of what I did, just like I showed you in the, the presentation. Um, but I'll just show you in the layers what those scales look like so you can see how I handled them. So there's my grid of scales. You can see all of them there. I'll just turn that off though. There we go. And then we can turn that one back on. So now you can see all those scales in. And I think the most important thing to remember about scales is if we look really close, we see all of these scales over the spots. They're not all exactly the same. Um, we see some that have more highlights on them and some that have less. Some scales are showing light and then some scales are showing darker. Uh, and so that's something to remember when you're doing yours too, is that they don't all have to be the same. It's okay to change them up a little bit. Um, the, I, the, the idea is just to be somewhat consistent in them. Okay, I am going to um, bring in the eye. There's the eye. I, my philosophy about the eye is that I always do the eye last. And that's because if I can get it to look good without the eye painted, then when I do paint the eye, I, it'll look really good. So there's my eye. And then I usually go back and do little fine details. And so then I'm looking at little highlights uh, on the top here, um, looking for highlights on the gill and highlights on the eye. And so I may bring in some more. So you can see this is a, a layer of highlights. And so I brought it into the fins. I'll toggle this on and off again. You can see what a difference that makes. So I bring some highlights into the belly, some highlights into the scales up here. Right, so I'll toggle that on and off. Whoops, wrong one. That one. So you can see just those little tiny details that help uh, bring out the scales of the fish so much more. Um, but I also do them to the fins too. You see, here's the fin. And you can see how much scale or details on those fins. So we do some on the scales and we do some on the fins. And it's not a lot. It's just enough to bring out those structures. Okay. And because this is a digital piece and you notice when you, um, I can tell the difference between something that's painted digitally and something that's painted, you know, in watercolor. And because my background is in watercolor, a lot of times what I do is I bring in a texture that I, and I overlay it into the painting. So, I've taken this digital painting of this fish and then I bring a texture in and overlay it. And then you can start to see some of the textures of a watercolor in the painting. And I think it makes it look a lot more natural. Okay. I'll leave this fish up for a little bit and then you guys can ask me some questions. Um, I would love to see, for those of you who decided to work on this, I would love to see some of your, some of your um, illustrations and see how they came out. Even if you end up working on them a little bit after this uh, demo, I would love to see how they come out. So you can send them to me, my email, or um, you can uh, tag me on uh, your social, and that's totally fine too. And I'd love to be able to share some of these if that's okay. I told them also if they um, if they do uh, do a drawing and email us or tag social media that we'll send them something as an incentive. So, so yeah, I tell you what, I tell you what, if you guys send me something, I have stickers of so many different fish. I will send you guys a nice little sticker pack. Um, so that should get all of you guys sending me something, I bet. I'll get your address and I'll ship you out some stickers. Does that sound good? 
and there's nothing better than getting mail right now while we're stuck at home. So yeah, no, it really is true. So these are the, this is, I don't have the stickers in here, but this is one of my stickers right there. Oh, you guys can't see it. I'll stop share so you can, and I'll share again in just a sec. So I, these are my little fish stickers and I got them for a bunch of different kinds of fish. You can stick them on anything, coolers, surfboards, skateboards, outside, inside, it doesn't matter. Water bottles, they hold up amazingly. So if anybody has a question, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question while you have a chance. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions, you guys. Okay, um, I had a question and the question was, what type of fish is your favorite? Oh man, that is a tough question. I have so many favorites. I think um, one of the coolest fish that I've ever seen is a hogfish. And I know you guys have hogfish over there. I had the chance of diving with a hogfish and uh, was down in Key West and diving with a friend of mine. And I just remember seeing a bunch of them there and they, are, they just are the strangest, coolest looking fish and they're so colorful. So I would say that that's definitely one of my favorites. Okay. I was just wondering. What's your favorite fish? I don't know. Maybe you'll find out after you do some fish paintings. Maybe it'll you'll... probably be a species, it'll probably be some sort of tight shark. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm gonna mute myself now. Well, thank you for the question. Anyone else? What's your fa What's your the hardest fish to draw? That's a really good question. I think um, for me, the hardest fish to draw would be probably something in like a snapper or a bonefish or something like that, that has a lot of scales. And not only do they have a lot of scales, their scales are so perfect that you can't, you, you have to do them perfectly for the fish to look like a fish. Um, and so, or to fish to look like that particular species. And so it just takes so long to do. Um, and that's, you know, just the, the, the time it takes to focus and pay attention that long, it just can be really draining. Um, the, the pomfret that I showed you would fall into that category. It had all those scales. And I remember posting that and then um, saying about, telling people how, how tired I was uh, because I had been looking at scales for so long. So I would say a snapper like fish are the toughest ones to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, you guys? What's the easiest fish to draw? Um, I think the easiest ones to draw are fish like sharks and rays because they don't have any scales in their, well, they do, they have denticles, right? Uh, which are little teeth like scales, but they, you don't see them on the surface. When you look at a shark, they're just smooth, um, and, and, and clean looking. So for me, those are the easiest ones to do. That's a good question. Any other ones? I think, I think that might be it. I really appreciate you doing this with us. It's awesome. Everybody Absolutely. was super excited about it. And I am excited to see all of your fish. So send them to, uh, to both of us. You can tag us on social media or email. Um, I'll, I'll get um, Amadea's email too and send us your fish. And I'd love to send you something and then he'll send you something. You get double letters in the mail. So. Uh, you'll get double. You'll get some stickers from me. And so... Thank you so much for having me. Um, if you ever want me to come back, I'd be, I'd love to do it at some point. Um, so I really appreciate it. It's been an honor to teach this to you guys. Thank you so much. It was awesome. We appreciate okay. it. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Bye guys. Before we stop, can you undo everyone so I can all say bye at once? Yep, everybody say thank you. <laughs> bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, guys. <laughs>